Hello and welcome to uh, the Derek's Diary channel uh, and a Tim Tebow update, really. I was going to do a video, I, I was going to call it the Tim Tebow Project. Now, I'm, I'm not going to do it, but I want to go over the key information that I think is very, very important. So let's get started. Now, I think before I get going on all this, I think I should give, give out my philosophy for coaching. The link for the image, I'm looking at the uh, nine individual things that I find very important. First link on the more info. Let's get started. Basics of coaching. Number one, know who you are, your players and your team. If you don't know, you're in trouble. Number two, maximize your strengths to the best of your ability while you minimize slash correct your weaknesses the best you possibly can. Number three, know who your opponent is and their capabilities. Number four, maximize your opponent's weaknesses and minimize their strengths to the best of your ability. Number five, adjust to the message of the market. This is a world thing. Situational football. You see what's going on, you look at all the analysis for it, and you make your decisions based on that. It's got the players that fit your system that you are playing and look for the certain traits that are required. Number seven, playbooks should always be modified to adjust to the message of the market and who you are. Number eight, psychology is a major factor for motivation as well as physical endurance. Get the best staff you possibly can for both factors. This is important to win mentally and physically. Finally, and the most important, team. This is a family when you're in a team and make sure you play the team as it is designed to. Individual stats will occur when team is in full function and everybody is leaders. Okay, so I got through that because I'm going to refer back to a few of these as I move on. So I have a couple of articles that I want to uh, go over. First one, and this is the first article down below, I'm not going to read all of it. Broncos cut quarterback uh, Kyle Orton. The Broncos released the 29-year-old veteran quarterback Tuesday six weeks after benching him following a 1-4 start. Now, there's a lot within here, so I'm only going to be going over uh, basically what I think is needed to be going over. That's just, because uh, there's a few things that I wanted to state in here. They're basically stating that he could go to uh, either Chicago or uh, Houston. But, uh, let's see. Okay, they said that the Broncos tried to trade Orton after the lockout ended. Okay, whatever. They were so insistent on not having Tebow as the quarterback that I don't believe that. Okay. This is a long article. It was near the end. On Monday, John Elway, this is lower on the article, John Elway said on his weekly radio show, however, that he wasn't sold on Tebow as the long-term answer at quarterback. Say the second-year pro has to become a better passer and improve on third downs. So before we continue on and reply on that, let's go back to the basics of coaching. One, know who you are. Two, maximize your strengths, minimize your weaknesses. So just based on that alone, just based on that. So you know you got a quarterback who, quite frankly, isn't the greatest of, I'm going to throw right to left hand, who isn't the greatest of pocket passers, and he's struggling on third down. Well, why is he even out on third down? Have you ever heard, no, you haven't heard, have you ever heard of something called quarterback by committee? Not just one quarterback, but two. When it's 3rd and 12, 3rd and 15, Tebow should be on the sidelines for a play. But the NFL hasn't come to grip to understand what a quarterback by committee would really mean. Now, obviously, Tom Brady, you're not going to take Brady out for a couple of plays. Some teams don't need it. But a lot of teams right now, I think, would. So I find that very interesting how they're complaining about his third down when they're not understanding his weaknesses. So what do you do about that? You get a quarterback. Two quarterbacks on your team. 
Plain and simple. Tebow gets a bunch of runs like a running back would, and he's tired. You spell him like you would spell uh, a Ray Rice or an Arian Foster. But, no, I, I don't understand how they don't get it. I really, really don't. Next article. Tim Tebow's tangibles are difficult to measure. And, and I've actually measured it, and uh, let's go on after that. I'll talk about how I measure as the second best quarterback ever to play the game as of now. We'll get into that in a second. According to an ESPN report, Tim Tebow said he doesn't pay attention to the lukewarm support from Broncos Chief of uh, Football Operations, John Elway, and insists and instead focuses on trying to get better as a quarterback. Well, I'm glad you're not focusing on John Elway. He's an idiot right now. He's a complete idiot. And Tebow. If he wants to disrespect you this bad and wants someone else to be the starting quarterback for Denver, then start and kick Denver's ass later on down the line. But, uh, what is exactly that makes an NFL quarterback great? This is an article again. Is that it, uh, it monstrous career stats like Brett Favre's uh, close to 72,000 passing yards? Is it the big season that Tom Brady had with 50 touchdowns? Uh, no one is about to speak on Tim Tebow in the same breath as an all-time great quarterback like Brett Favre or Brady. I am... I am, but his intangibles are setting him apart from the rest of the young quarterbacks in the NFL today. Work ethic, leadership, clutch performance, and the hunger to win, just some of the many intangibles Tebow possesses which are extremely hard to explain or quantify. Okay, how is it possible, how can it possibly be explained that an NFL quarterback is winning games without being able to throw football with accuracy or any kind of consistency? Well, as far as consistency is concerned, if you look back at one of my older videos from before the season started in late August, I did a Tebow video log, and I pretty much labeled, labeled Tim Tebow as that of a touchdown machine, which is a pretty decent stat, I would have to say. So, therefore, his career stats, like I say, I, I got him as the second best quarterback ever to play the game as of now. His, his stats are so small that there's only so much I can talk about it. Meaning, the top five quarterbacks from 5-1 to one ever to play the game, based on stats alone and the ratings that I've come up with, have number five, Tom Brady, number four, Peyton Manning, number three, Steve Young, number two, Tim Tebow, and number one, Aaron Rodgers. So right now I have Aaron Rodgers as the best quarterback ever to play the game, and I'm very confident on that. Now for Tim Tebow, this is his career stats, as of now. 97 completions, 207 attempts for a percent of around 47. Okay, that, that, you can't say that's second best of all time when that's the case, even when you include milliscule stats. Well, let's continue. 1,363 yards, 12 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, 99 carries for 615 yards, 9 touchdowns, 21 sacks, for a loss of 122 yards. He's lost one career fumble. Thus, he has had 327 touches. Within the 327 touches, he's had 1,856 combined yards. So, as far as the three categories that I talk about, efficiency for ball movement, which is very important. Scoring touchdowns, very important. And uh, control, ball control, not turning it over, very important. I put those three together. I talked about this on the Endless Mounted channel. As it goes right now, as far as physically moving the ball, Tim Tebow is amongst the worst of the great quarterbacks. He's in the list of the likes of, uh, what do we got? The likes of uh, Terry Bradshaw and Randall Cunningham. And John Elway, even for that matter. John Elway only had a rating, or basically John Elway averaged, uh, what was it? 6.05 yards every time he had a touch. Right now.